a previous church member who was in his 80s at the time, he once told me that he struggled with religion all of his life. He'd grown up Christian, dabbled in Buddhism, and then eventually became atheist. He was a really intelligent man, well-versed in the sciences, and he told me that that's what pulled him back into his Christian faith. It was later in life when he was studying quantum physics. That surprised me. First off, because I don't really know much about quantum physics or what that entails, to be honest. And second of all, because I never really heard of someone attributing their faith or their a resurgence in faith to quantum physics before. So I asked him, you know, tell me a little bit more about this. And so he shared that quantum physics is essentially the science behind the universe and how it works at a scale smaller than an atom. So it encompasses everything, he said. And as he dug deeper into the science of atoms and particles of protons and neutrons and electrons and how these tiniest building blocks of nature work to create the world around us that we see, he became convinced of God's intelligent design. The more he studied math and science and how these principles play out in nature, the more he believed that God indeed had a hand in creating it all. It was kind of like how I felt when I learned about that divine proportion, that golden spiral in geometry class the first time. Realizing that the number of petals on a flower, the shape of a shell, that's consistent, that it matches this thing that God had to have a hand in it. I find that sentiment beautiful. Creation, in, in so many ways, it points us back to God. Just as God, in so many ways, often points us back to creation and to our role in helping care for and redeem it. So as we continue this morning in our sermon series, Songs of Our Faith, We'll be looking at a hymn that also connects these two concepts of God and nature. And we'll be discussing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. This is again a a familiar and much beloved hymn for many of us. Although one that likely we're not familiar with the story of origin behind it. At least I wasn't. But there was a Swedish pastor by the name of Carl Boberg who first wrote a poem that would one day, after many translations and interpretations, become known as How Great Thou Art. Boberg was caught in a thunderstorm one day, walking home, and it was a violent storm, seemed to pop out of nowhere, and he and the people he was walking with had to immediately take cover. And just as suddenly as the storm had started, it was over, it was gone. There was nothing left but clear sky and warm sunshine. Boberg got home and he opened the window and he heard the sounds of the birds chirping and the church bells ringing. And that juxtaposition of such peaceful surroundings so soon after such a violent storm is what inspired him to write nine, nine stanzas of this poem that he called, O Great God in his native tongue, Swedish. This poem was soon set to a Swedish tune and began to grow in popularity. It was a song that people really liked, and it was translated into German and then into Russian. And the English version was translated by a man, Stuart Hein, and his wife while serving as missionaries in Ukraine. And since translation is more of an art than a science, Hein took some liberties with the original text. Instead of nine verses, he created four under the name, How Great Thou Art. And when we read the first two verses of the hymn, knowing that it was inspired by mighty acts of nature, we begin to see how it seeks to draw our attention to the world around us 
and God's great creation. The first two verses read, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made, I hear the stars, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, I hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountains grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. These verses, they, they speak to the world around us, the beauty of nature, the awe of the stars and the sky, the greatness of God's creation. When I think about the greatness of God's creation, my mind almost always goes back to Yellowstone National Park, where Adam and I went for our honeymoon. To the geysers, water spewing forth from the ground because of intense pressure. The bears and the moose and the bison just roaming around everywhere. The multiple colors of the thermal waters of morning glory pool. The highlighter yellow, the radioactive orange, the crystal clear blue. It looked like a child's tie-dye project, but it was real. It was natural. It's all inspiring. It's of earth and of God. And it's that beauty and majesty which inspires our response in the refrain of this hymn. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. When we're confronted with the beauty of creation, confronted with the fathomless depths of the ocean, the vastness of the night sky, with the intricacies of atoms and particles that make up all living things, we have no choice but to turn to God. Our soul proclaims how great thou art. And our scripture this morning, too, it draws our attention to creation, the majesty of God within it. And as we talked about several times over the past few months, also our role in caring for creation. Psalm 8 reads, when I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you would care for them? I'm sure many of you, like me, have looked up at the night sky and had your breath taken away by the vastness of it and wondered what it meant that you were simply a speck of dust floating in this cosmos. And yet despite our seeming insignificance in the grand order of things, we hear the psalmist continue saying, you have given human beings dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet. O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Even though we might just be a speck in the cosmos, we're called to partner with God in caring for this great creation. And as we care for God's creation, we hear God's name throughout the earth because all creation speaks of it. God's name is heard of the soft whisper of the wind and the pattering of raindrops and the blooming of flowers and the setting of the sun. God asks us to turn toward God's creation and caring for it. And in turn, creation turns back toward God as our soul sings out of God's greatness in the midst of it. It's really fascinating to me how many of our favorite and most well-loved hymns are often inspired by nature thunderstorms, shipwrecks, moments when the authors had moments of clarity, realizing that they actually were not in control. 
realizing that there was something far bigger and greater out there than they are, than we are. Creation can inspire us with awe and wonder, but it can also bring us to our knees in surrender. And it can, at times, help us to better rely upon and bow before God. Our struggle is often simply not paying attention to it. Being surrounded by concrete and buildings rather than grass and trees. God points us toward creation. And creation points us back toward God. But in order for us to experience that connection, we have to first experience the world around us. To experience nature and creation so that we might hear God's name whispered back to us. So that our souls might sing to God, how great thou art. So in this week ahead, I invite you to make an effort to experience nature more often in your daily life. Maybe it's a short walk around your neighborhood. Maybe it's a short drive to a close by hike. Maybe it's spending more time in your backyard or simply intentionally looking out the window. Our scripture in Psalm 145 exclaims, on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. I shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your greatness. As you take in a bit of nature this week, See if you can hear the name of God echoing throughout the earth. See if your soul just might be inspired to sing, How Great Thou Art. Amen.